What is up, everyone? My name is Chris and Fanzon. You are listening to the Hidden Doors podcast. Upcoming is my conversation with Jelsey. She is a health and wellness coach based in Denver, Colorado. She's also passionate about helping women live a healthy lifestyle that is authentic and true to them. She has had a similar transformation. Her life has completely changed after owning her story and falling in love with who she is through the beauty of health and wellness. And now she wants to do the same thing to other people. So I hope you enjoy the conversation. If you do, subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up on this video. Hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date on more podcasts coming down like this. I hope you enjoy. Um, so Je it's Chelsea, right? Yeah, Chelsea. Right? Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> um, this platform. So I used to use Skype. I used to use Skype. Um, mainly use Skype to record mm -hmm. my podcasts. And I had two issues. One is the person's. I couldn't like edit the video that much. It was a file that just got sent to me and I couldn't yeah. edit much of it. Like in this platform, I could, I have two separate audio, two, two separate videos, me and you, and I can edit like how they look together. Oh, wow. With Skype, I couldn't do that. And a lot of the times their face was like halfway cut off <laughs> and it's like embarrassing to have someone come on here and their face to be cut off. It's like, do I even post this on YouTube? Yeah. And so I was looking around and I found Riverside and this this platform is amazing. It um it records a local file on your computer. Mm -hmm. So if so like the when you're looking at me right now, I don't know if I'm super crystal clear or not, but this is over web and then once the files are completely uploaded on your computer, like I can download them. I don't know exactly the technology how that works, but I get a <laughs> beautiful local file that is crystal clear even if like i come off and sometimes you know in in a conference call you might like uh you you know you might come in and out because the internet service might be down but that won't show in the actual file wow you'll just like because it's the local file so it'll be fine so yeah i've been using this for the past <sighs> month or two and mm -hmm. i love it it's amazing i don't know if you do any kind of podcasting or video recording but it's it's all it really worth it like if you have a crucial conversation that you don't have like that you don't want to get ruined then riverside's you, you got to do riverside it's amazing nice yeah i'm impressed by the like even from my end the layout is so cool by the way this is not <laughs> sponsored <laughs> um yeah, yeah the layout is incredible um, and yeah, right, right now I'm just using zoom to do interviews with, um, like anybody that comes on to my podcast. Um, oh, so you do have a podcast. Yeah, I do. Yes, I Beautiful. do. Beautiful. I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> yes, I was looking I'm at also. your Facebook page. I, I saw you had a site that you do coaching, but I didn't see the mm -hmm. podcast. Yeah, it is super cool. I'll have to get you on there next time. <laughs> I will come on easily, but yeah. you have to get Riverside. You'll love it. Yeah, I'm going to. I actually wrote it down because it sounds so cool. I'm going to circle it too now that it sounds even better. Thank you. Yeah, I, you can control the audio <laughs> levels. I each like audio level. That was annoying thing too. Like if you're coming in lower high, I can like control your levels. Ooh. It's beautiful. You can't beat the stem platform. And I definitely don't get paid to say all this, but it's just such <laughs> a really, it's a, just a really nice platform. Nice. I've had no issues with it yet. Good. <laughs> yeah. So, Jelsey, thank you for coming on here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. What do you, what, you, you're a life coach? I'm Is a health right? and wellness coach. Health and wellness coach. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between that and life coach? So I have a degree in health science and Ooh. a background in nutrition and exercise. So the- So you're the real deal. I am the real deal. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. It is- um, it is so cool. And we do some aspects of, of life coaching, but more so through the scope of um, health and wellness. So if it is affecting their health or their overall wellness in some way, we can talk about that. But overall, I'm pretty much um, 
I don't know if I could use the word expert, but that's my expertise is behavior change. So helping people incorporate healthy lifestyle changes into their life in order to enhance their life. And what I understand is you focus on helping women. Is that correct? Yeah. So right now, I actually, my first couple of clients were men, um, even though I was trying to attract, attract more women into my, um, <laughs> into my business. But somehow I ended up with men, which was great and a cool experience. Um, but I wasn't able to connect as well or kind of understand them as well. So it was a great experience as far as the healthy lifestyle coaching. But when it came to talking about self love, because I do everything through a lens of learning how to develop a relationship with yourself. um, I just wasn't having that connection with men. So I thought I would, I I will still work with men. Yes. But I thought I would um, specifically say women to maybe attract more more ladies into the business. Nice. So what is self-love? How do you get self-love? Man, that is a good question. (laughs) Um, So basically self-love is kind of, well, it is the relationship that you have with yourself. It's a loving relationship. It's a relationship that's unconditional. So even though you do have imperfections or you make a mistake, you're you're much more gentle with yourself. Um, And then it's also something that's continuous. You have to continuously nurture this relationship with yourself throughout your entire life or else you will start to slip again. Yeah. The the good thing is knowing – I think that's the one of the biggest things that has helped me is like (sighs) knowing perfection is not like – it's not a, a thing that always needs to be happening. Like mm-hmm. you can go after something and fall on your face yeah. and you're fine. Don't worry about it. You'll get up. Exactly. You'll embarrass yourself sometimes. Mm-hmm. You'll trip. You'll stumble on your words. You'll sound like an idiot. Sometimes you'll just fall mm-hmm. and you're not going to be perfect. But if you go into the world knowing you won't be perfect, I think you have a better way of uh, navigating the situation. If you go into it with the expectations that all these things were screw ups, oh, I did this mm-hmm. wrong, you're like a mess with yourself. I, I feel like I was like that for a long time. Yeah, it was, it's hard to like make a mistake. You know, it's like uh, you're in a meeting and there's a client presentation, or you do something, you said something wrong, and you're like beating yourself up for it. It's helpful mentally to because what that's that's what stops you from like challenging yourself you stop challenging yourself boom that's it yeah you're out of here you 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 are on the stagnant path yeah you want to make mistakes in your life because it shows that you're actually trying you're actually doing something and showing up when you find yourself not making mistakes for too long you're kind of keeping yourself in this box and it's really safe box but you can't grow in it yeah (laughs) uh what got you into this um, my life. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> um, so throughout like high school, I struggled um, with depression and anxiety and low self esteem. And that um, started actually, it came with me to college as well. And I ended up dropping out because I was just kind of, I was like, all right, now I'm just gonna settle and not do anything. And then in that, in that way, like, I'm not gonna get hurt because my just my self esteem was so low. I just didn't feel a desire or draw to do or try anything new because I was afraid of getting hurt even more than I already was. And so um, in high school, I was actually in cross country. So I was always into health in some sort of way. Um, And after I dropped out of college, I came back to running again. And in coming back to running, I started feeling a shift in me. I started feeling a little different. And so I... Like a good shift? Yeah, like a good shift, a really good shift because I was like taking care of my body. And there were... um, My depression got to the point that like I wasn't raised as the type of person, like my family just didn't know too much about therapy. So that wasn't really an option until after I graduated. And then um, 
I got to the point where I started seeing a therapist and that helped a lot. And then I started running again, which also helped. And then I got really interested in nutrition and eating well, because I would always like Google, like, how do I be less depressed? How do I love myself more? And those were the things of taking care of your body and then going to therapy and working on mindset. Um, and then there was just one point where it was after a run, I was um, stretching and I just had this weird, like warm feeling that I was okay. And I was going to be okay. Like things were just going to be all right. And then from that, what point, a nice feeling. I know. Right. And, <laughs> and that's, that's exactly what led me to what I do because I was like, how can I share this feeling with others? That was my, my biggest draw. And so I went to, um, like I went straight to my computer after that and started Googling different, um, careers and college degrees that I can get. And then I saw health science and the focus was healthy lifestyle coaching and, it's uh here we are now. <laughs> you when what uh what year in college did you drop out? Um so I made it through the first semester of my freshman year and half of the second semester. And my degree was in communication, so I already was just um not really digging it cuz I had this feeling of I'm learning how to speak and present myself, but I'm not learning what to speak about. <laughs> I was like, I don't have a story to tell. And so um, I dropped out because of that. And then also because of everything else that was going on. And so when I did, well, re -enroll, nice. yeah, um, you dropped out quickly before you wasted all your damn money yeah. on these yes. expensive colleges yeah. Yeah. teaching you about <laughs> bull crap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I started at the University of Texas at Austin. So that was definitely not a cheap school. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird thing. Um, Sunday, I believe this past Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, one of these last days, I was like in a slump. I think it's because I had like a stomach virus a week or a few days before, and I was on a really consistent path of exercising, waking up early because kicking butt, <laughs> running three miles in the cold, and then I got the stomach virus. I'm a little bit back on the track now, but I got the stomach virus and then I was like, ugh. God, I fell into a slump for like two days. Um, and I was like just sitting on the couch and I felt like absolute crap. Mm -hmm. Like I just like, not like sick, just like, what the frick am I doing right now? Mm -hmm. Like I was, I, I need to do something. And so I'm back exercising and I feel great. But it's a weird thing. It's like you put yourself, it's not, it's, I have a theory. You're uh, well. There's a couple of things to unpack here. It's not fun to think about going and exercising. It's like annoying, <laughs> um, especially like what how I do it. Like I will go run in the morning, and it's in New York, and it's really cold right now. And five thirty, no one's out. No one's out. It's dark. It's cold. Everyone's sleeping. You got to get out of bed. and You got to go. Run. That's annoying. Like. The, <laughs> But after you do it, it's beautiful. You feel great. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's a there's three phases in my head. It's like the first phase, before you go do something really hard, it the anticipation of it sucks. It is the worst part of it. It's sort of like opposite of like when you're going on vacation or doing something fun. Like the mm -hmm. anticipation of it is almost better than actually doing it for some weird reason. But the anticipation of doing something that sucks – is horrible. You don't want to do it. Then you start doing it and then it sucks a little bit less and then you're done and you feel like a million dollars. But you don't get to feel good until you put yourself to the mentally really annoying things. Waking up and going running or exercise. Like you, when you went running, I'm sure it was annoying at first to think about. Like you probably run like five miles at, at a time. If you were a, <laughs> if you were in doing this at high school, yeah, I would assume you run like five, 10 miles, maybe not that's annoying to right think now. about. <laughs> Definitely not right now. I'm like you, I, I do have those like fluctuations of phases. Um, and especially now that I, I have yoga. So sometimes I'm like, Oh, I'm doing yoga. I don't have to go for a run. Um, yes. But right now I, I'm keeping it 
keeping it lower mileage, uh, one to three. What? One to three. <laughs> yeah, between one and three, just to kind of wake my body up again. Um, and the way that, like something that's helped me that m- might help you, depending, yeah, I'll say it and then I'll let you decide. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So something that's helped me is before I exercise or before I go on a run to kind of um, get rid of that anticipation or like feeling like, oh, this is going to suck because that's a normal human thing. Your body wants to conserve energy. It doesn't want to go run unless it's being chased by something. Um, (laughs) And so something that helps me is I tell myself that I'm giving myself permission for this time. I say like all right, self, we're going to go for a run and it is going to suck, but I'm giving you permission to just only focus on that. We don't have to think about all the other things you have to do. It's your time to just be. And that helps so much. (laughs) I will give myself permission. Yes. Give yourself permission to at least try to enjoy it. (laughs) So one to three, uh, how many days a week are you running? Uh, right now, I would say last week I did either three or four days, but also we have like a foot of snow outside. I don't think you can mm. see it here. Um, and I, that's tough. Yeah, I won't, <laughs> I won't run in the snow cause I don't have proper shoes for it. Um, if you wear like cloth shoes, your shoes get all wet and then your toes mm. get icy cold. So, <laughs> yeah. So then you do yoga, you do yoga as well. Mm-hmm. You said I do. How how is that? Because that's tougher than it's like yoga. What I understand is pretty tough. It is like tough. it's like physically tough sometimes, and mentally I'd say too. Um, in that you like with yoga, you're being very present. Like you can just go through the motions, and it's fine. And and it depends on to what extent you're doing it because there's different variations of every pose. So you can have like a super chill yoga day and do the same thing as someone else that's having a super intense yoga day, if that yeah. makes sense. Like you can do the poses, just not as deep or as um, like with as much effort. Um, yeah. But yeah, I do feel like even mentally too, cause it's kind of like a body meditation in a way. So you're, you're clearing your mind and focusing on your breathing. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy it. And I enjoy the, that if I am having a rougher day, I can do a, a lower version of it. Um, and then if I'm, I'm ready and want to push myself, I can do something a little more intense. How long have you been doing it for? Uh, yoga? Uh, oh my what God. got you into it? Like, why'd you start doing it? That's a really good question. <laughs> I don't, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I and like you hear people talk about it and I don't have like a studio or anything right now. During the summer I do a summer series. Not I don't lead any classes, but I go to a summer series class. Got um it. but the like during the winter I just use yoga with Adrian. I'm not sure if you are familiar with her. Is it an app? Um, is it an app or something? No, she's on YouTube and she's Ooh. from Austin, Texas. And she is just the most charismatic. I think she used to be an actress. So she's a very charismatic yoga instructor and she's very free spirited and all about self love. Um, and funny. Sometimes she'll like sing during the yoga class and it's hilarious. Um, but yeah, in reality, I don't know what really get, got me started, but I know that um, when I did start, it was just here and there. But this past summer, when I did that summer series um, in Denver, that's when I started getting more into it and wanting to learn even more of the the different poses and how far I can push myself. What are the benefits that you've uh, experienced from doing more yoga? Hmm. That's also a good question. I know like scientifically what the benefits are or based on research, what benefits are, but for me, um, I feel. Did you, did you feel like the scientific explanations and evidence, uh, was consistent with what you felt? I think so. But I also have a lot of other things going on in my life too, that I make space for that help me feel this way, Mm, um, where I'm at right now. And it's hard to to isolate. It is hard to isolate, but I would say, um, 
it does connect you more with your body. I notice whenever I do skip a day of yoga, it feels a little off. And I, in the morning, I have a morning routine and I call it my sacred space. So like no one talked to me until I finish my morning routine. Um, and part of that is doing some yoga and just giving myself that time to get a little uncomfortable and maybe even a little playful. I feel like yoga is pretty playful too. Um, and connect more with my body. I'm going to assume that you meditate. Is that true? I do. Yes, I do. You do meditate. <laughs> nice. With, is that part of your uh, morning routine? It is. <laughs> yes. I'm not sure. Are you familiar with Headspace? Yeah. Yes. It's an app, right? Yeah, it is an app. That's what I'm using right now. The first time I meditated, I just like lit a candle and focused on the flame. And I was like in ninth grade and that was like my meditation. Um, but it's evolved and I feel like I love doing stuff on my own, like unguided meditation. But right now, Headspace, they have these guided meditations that are kind of 30 day challenges is what it seems like. Um, and so one of them that I just finished um, is a self love meditation. And it was an it was phenomenal and I would recommend it to everyone. And the next one that I'm moving on to is one about creativity and expanding your mind and allowing yourself to be more creative. How does a headspace work? Does it, does it, is someone talking over mm -hmm. it and, and you're listening? Got it. Yeah. It's really cool. So that is a guided, that's guided meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They have unguided too, where they'll set a timer for you and let you know when the time is up. Um, and I do that every now and then if I just really need some space, but the guided ones, they're just so cool because they have, um, different exercises that you can try within your meditation. Like one of them was feeling like a warm light on your body, kind of like sunshine, but then to the point that you are the light. So like you, you don't feel mm -hmm. your body anymore. You're just kind of existing. Um, so it's showing you like your essence. It's a really cool one. I haven't tried that type of meditation, so maybe I could try. Is Headspace free, by the way? I think or you have to pay for it? You can get it for free, but then they have a premium um, that mm. unlocks more of the meditations. Got it. Mm. Those premium I know. mother efforts. <laughs> they get us every time. <laughs> um, you also eat healthy. You said you've... I, do you have a... You, you said do you have some kind of degree in diet or something, or you just research diet? So my more? degree is in health science, um, but through ISSA, which is like the International Sports Science Association, I have um, like a nutrition coach certification and then a personal trainer certification. So I can help with diet. Um, and yeah, I'd say I eat pretty okay. <laughs> yeah. What... um. Have you read any books on diet as well um, to, to understand that a little more? Uh, textbooks. <laughs> I, yeah, mostly textbooks studying for school because we have to take nutrition classes for my degree and then also for the certifications that I did. Um, but I wouldn't say like I could help someone get to the, the basics, but I can't help someone get to like the extreme, like extreme health. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think all this kind of, Maybe this world just needs the basics. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and you don't—you don't, honestly don't need a degree to know mm -hmm. the basics. It's very like, true. You may know a lot more in the degree, but there's a lot of stuff you can learn in books that this—I don't know if it's a matter of learning, and maybe it's, I don't know what's going on. People just eat like absolute crap. Mm -hmm. Like what? Like what was the? Uh, like biggest takeaways that you remember learning about your diet and what you learned and how you should have changed it. Like, were there any big things? Like, oh, well, what the hell was I doing here mm -hmm. in your um, diet? So one, I'd say um, to the first part of that is that people know how to eat healthy. It's just the behavior change that is the issue because it's well, I think there's two things. Yeah. There could be two things. Because it's like, yes, you know if you eat a bag of Doritos, <laughs> that is not good. You know if you have tremendous amount of alcohol, that's probably not great. If you eat a bit bunch of McDonald's, you probably know that's not great. 
then there's like other side to it that you probably even learn more though like uh like why gra like gra so I, I read um a few books to get up a little up to speed on all this stuff like so the grass fed beef mm -hmm. and why it's so good for you and my understanding is when you have like grass fed dairy um what the hell are they called again what am i thinking of there's a i forget i forget there's a balance of uh oh omega sixes and omega threes yeah. there's a balance of omega sixes and omega threes that are perfect almost perfect when you have dairy that's grass fed mm -hmm. but if it's not grass fed then it's like a complete imbalance of like it could be 50 hot it could be like 50 to 1 ratio mm -hmm. and those imbalances are really horrible for you and like there's like stupid little nuances like that that like i would never have thought of mm -hmm. i knew eating doritos was bad i didn't know like certain things like were like not good and i could steer away from like i thought if i just had I, I don't eat a lot of meat, but if I just had meat, I wouldn't think that like the kind of meat that it was sourced was good. I always thought grass fed was just more of a, a uh, more humane mm -hmm. way. Yeah, it is. But I also think that it's the quality too now, but now mm -hmm. that I know the, the science behind it. So I feel like there is 70% of it is like you, you need behavior change you know that's not great for you. The other side of it is like there actually probably is pieces of the puzzle that just is a little more nuanced that mm. you might need to learn and and read up on. Is that accurate or you think that's wrong? I see what, do you what think? you're saying. Yeah, I do hear what you're saying. Um, so yeah, there you do know because everyone has a good general knowledge of the basics for eating healthy like eating more vegetables eating grass-fed beef which may have not been um a basic thing to know or basic knowledge and sometimes i take that for granted in my studies is i don't know really what basic knowledge is or where that where to draw that line um but yeah you probably have a you probably have a good foundation of all this stuff yeah, Here, nutrition, I, mean, I think, would be my weakest as far as like all of it goes. I know definitely the basics. My um, expertise, though, is the behavior change. Got it. Mm -hmm. Me and my dad are in this constant debate right now about butter. Ooh. <laughs> Here's the debate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, he, so butter is like like i think it's all tied to cholesterol it's very bad for you don't eat a lot of butter but my argument is uh like grass-fed butter in reasonable amounts like i put a little bit on my toast every once in a while is not bad like that grass-fed butter is not bad for you it's got the right balances of omegas it's healthy enough and then the other side of it is Mar is it margarine? L yeah, like the, the just like hydrogenated oil or yes, yeah. But I think his I think his aunt because there's like a, a smart balance or something something that's sort of it's there's like fake butter that mm. they had they put shit in it. But my argument is that all those oils are not good for you. All those oils are have been linked to like cancer and stuff, and just it's not healthy for you. So that's like one thing where it's nuanced, mm -hmm. where it's like, well, is it bad? Is it bad for you or not? Who the hell knows? I think that I'm right because I read up on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there you go. You did your research. I think <laughs> um, even based because I, yeah, I don't know the nuances of it, but based on like what I know, just in that, whole foods are always going to be better than anything processed. Yes, that's like number one. Yeah. If, if someone just followed whole foods versus processed you'd win that's yeah. it it's like is it packaged is it in a box has it been made okay don't buy it and Just that's yeah don't and buy it that's another thing with like um behavioral change and um your environment around you my sister just got this app on her phone i don't know what it's called um but it you scan whatever food you're getting um i'm sure if it's a fruit or vegetable you like you know it's a whole food but if it's a box of something you can scan the food and see like the quality 
of mm. that food. And it's so cool. Um, and I don't know where I was going with that, but it's, <laughs> it's an incredible. Well, it's helpful. Yeah. It's a nice it's tool helpful. for people. And it helps you figure out like how processed that, that food was. My, uh, I don't go to that extent anymore because mm -hmm. I shop at Trader Joe's and I just trust like their whole mantra. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have a Trader Joe's by you. Their whole mantra is like no process, mm -hmm. no, uh, you know, fake processed crap in our food. It's like all, it's all supposed to be natural stuff like you shouldn't expect anything crazy so i've been through it enough where if i pick up a package i just sort of trust that it's not going to be anything like ridiculous mm -hmm. in there i've seen enough and i've seen enough packages like you go to stop and shop it's like it's like a scientific like exam it's like every strange thing in the ingredients list if you go to like a package uh -huh. maybe buy cereal but then you go to trader joe's and it's like four things it's like Apples, pear, banana. It's like it tells you yeah, like the four or five exactly. ingredients that are in there. So a, a lot of plugs in here. Riverside, Trader Joe's. Yes. <laughs> what else? Love we Trader have uh, – what, what did we um, – what's the app? Oh, I don't remember the name of the app, but I remember where I was going with that, um, creating your environment. So anytime we go yes. to the store, we do make sure we get the, the food and groceries that have less ingredients and that are less processed. And we bring that into our house opposed to something that's more processed. So it's already readily available. So you don't have to think about it. Just like when you go to Trader Joe's, you walk in and you don't have to think about it. You can just eat yeah. healthy. Well, let's talk about behavior change. Yeah. That's your bread and butter. Yes, it is. What behaviors do you change? Ooh, <laughs> that's a big question or like a general <laughs> question. Um, so some examples of uh, one, the nutrition, like helping someone that, you know, wants to to change the way they eat. So incorporating healthy eating habits into their life. So that would be one exercising that's a huge one for individuals no matter what we're working on in the grand scheme of things it always comes back to i want to exercise more i want to be healthier um drinking water is a big one sleep is another one i've helped with um substance use so like tobacco quitting smoking um and then a big one of course is self-love changing that that negative inner talk that you have with yourself that's, that's weighing you down and keeping you from from loving yourself. Um, I don't know. Pretty much. Me yeah, yeah. That could be, maybe that's 80% of it, but who knows? Maybe there's more. But how do you now, what are the techniques to change this damn behavior? Yeah. So there's a lot of different techniques. Like I, I've learned stuff on my own through reading and then I've learned stuff through my degree and then also – I'm working on a board certification through the National Health and Wellness Board Certifying Group. Um, and they there's a lot of different skills that you can use. One is knowing like what stage of change someone's in, like if they're like pre-contemplation at the point of change where they don't want to change at all. Um, I can use some different strategies to get them to the point where they are like contemplating change. And then after that, from contemplation, you go to, I think it's um, planning. So you're like planning or preparing for your change. And then you're actually taking action and then maintaining. So there's that um, motivational interviewing, which is using like a kind, gentle, non-judgmental approach to helping people make behavior changes because when you think of a coach you kind of think of someone yelling at you and telling you you have to do this uh you have to do the things that are hard or you're never going to get what you want this is kind of a more gentle approach of like <laughs> where have you yeah and i like honestly that's um when i was in high school i wanted to be an inspirational speaker and i wanted to yell at people like that um but then in learning this it's such a powerful way to coach people it's more gentle um and instead of telling them what to do you are um you're pulling out what they already desire to do. So when they, when the idea comes from them instead of you, they're more likely to do it and to take action on it. So those are just a, a couple of, of coaching techniques. 
Have you read um, Atomic Habits? The one you just recently finished? <laughs> yes. No. Did I tell you? No. I've been watching oh. your YouTube videos. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I haven't. I've actually, I watched like a summary on it because I felt that with my education, I'd kind of have a gist. Um, and most of the things in that book are things that we've we've learned about in school. Um, so I never really took the time to to read it. it. But it, it yeah. would be one. You can probably write the book. You can probably write it yourself. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what are the techniques though? Like specifically, like do you uh, have people uh, who are maybe starting to want to exercise more? Okay. Do they start off like slow in the beginning just to get them used to it like how it, how do you build a long-term habit let's say to exercise like sure. is there a way that you can get them like maybe it's five minutes a day for the first week and then you do more and more and more and you'll get more used to it is it something like that like and and then also environment change is a big one that's mm-hmm. talked about in atomic habits um and, and another interesting thing about the environment like there's a couple things one is like when it's related to food you know, if you don't have any, if you buy all bad food and you put it in your kitchen, you're going to eat the that likelihood yeah. you're going to eat it is very high. The other side of environment was like uh, talked about how you have cues, mm-hmm. you have cues yeah. about your environment. So if you're in a uh, a room, design like this room, my podcast room, yeah. design specifically for something like your cues. I guess, kick in for like that. Mm-hmm. Like you're mentally prepared for it. If it's work, you're in a, you're in a work mindset and you got the work cues. But if you have like a, a mixed room of everything, you're like getting cues from all over the place and it's hard to like focus on one thing. So like that was something that I learned where like, even if you had a small room, you can divide it into like two different sections. The one be work, one to be like, I don't know, maybe exercise yeah. or reading and it just helps you like stay in the mindset because you're not like getting uh mixed signals when it comes to the cues so there's a few things that i learned um from that you know starting off just minimally understanding your environment Mm -hmm. habit stacking have you heard of habit stacking just like i it's like it you do a habit if you do have it every – like it's actually probably what you do every morning. If you're you, – you probably have your routine. You do uh, meditation and mm-hmm. yoga. If, but if you have something that you do like every day like meditation and you want to start a new habit like drinking more tea, maybe it's like you stack that habit with oh, like every I time I do – saying. And every time I do this, yeah, I'll also do this. That kind of goes back to the cues and the triggers – Um, and yeah, that, that is something that's very like that I use within my coaching is figuring out what those triggers are, because sometimes if you, like, if your goal is I want to work out right when I get home from work, because usually I just go and sit on the couch. So (laughs) one of the big things is, okay, what can we do to avoid the couch (laughs) on our way home? (laughs) Like, (laughs) they're like, but I passed my living room. Well, what can we do to avoid that? (laughs) Um, Yeah. So that, that is a big one because when you walk in, you're used to just like, all right, plop down on the couch, grab a snack, watch some TV and that's it. Um, But then if you change that and give yourself a different cue of maybe I'm going to leave my running shoes like right in the doorway or something or my running clothes and get dressed in the bathroom that's not near the living room and then go out for a run or go to work out. Um, you're completely surpassing that, that cue and that trigger. Um, and eventually you can get to the point where you don't even want to go and sit on the couch. You're just so used to doing your workout right after you get home. Yeah. Got to build good habits. Yeah, you really do. Um, I'm trying to think of another one on exercising. A big thing to keep in mind is, so I usually start with a vision um, for what they want that to look like. So if they do want to exercise more, I take a moment to ask them, okay, so imagine that. Like, what what does that look like? Because sometimes when you go into it and you're like, I want to exercise more, you don't really know what that looks like. You're just kind of going into this 
uncertainty. And so I say, okay, a month from now, like, what do you want that to look like? And they're like, oh, I want to be working out four days a week doing like, or going dancing, or I used to walk with my husband and now we don't walk anymore. Um, and I want to like buy a new pair of running shoes by that point or something. Um, so we usually envision that first and we take from their past experiences and their past successes of when have you exercised consistently before and what were you doing that helped you do that. So kind of bringing in that mastery experience of you've done this before, so how can we do it again? Um, and then looking into their why is huge too. Why are you exercising? Is it because you want to be able to play with your kids? Is it because you want to lose weight? Is it because you want to feel more energized? Yeah. Someone, I was talking to someone and they, um, I was on a podcast and they took me through this exercise, like not a physical exercise, but like a, an exercise where we said something and I was like, yeah, I need to work out more. And he's like, well, he's like, why do you want to work out more? And he took me, he took me through this like weird mental ninja. And it was like, it made me think like, oh yeah, why am I not doing this? And he got me to a point where I said something like, I said something that made it me want to do what I was thinking about. Yeah. It took it from like an inner thing that I've been thinking about for a long time and like sort of to tease it out and yeah. unravel it more and that more. That sounds more like more. coaching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Created, it's called a generative moment or an aha moment where something just clicks. I was doing a lot of clicking that yeah. day, I guess. <laughs> Good. <laughs> what would you tell? So, what do you tell to someone? who might be dealing with like depression in high school or college, like how you were able to get out of it and build a business mm -hmm. and have self love. Like how would you, how would someone do that at a younger age when I don't know, it's stressful. It's this world is stressful. Wow. They don't know what the hell they're going to do when they're all there. They're, they're High school and college is brutal. It is like, brutal. Social pressures. Yeah. Like, what what uh, advice do you give them based on all your experiences now? Yeah, I actually have been thinking a lot about that more lately um, because I do want to expand my reach and help people in any way I can, especially people that are kind of living or people that are living a similar story to mine. Um, so the biggest thing is therapy. Um, that's, that's huge. Finding a therapist, even if you, have and then the stigma, like not being afraid of the, exactly. like, I think there's a stigma on there therapy. Is. Yeah, there really is. because And all it really is, is talking. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, cause like when you have a bunch of jumbled up thoughts in your head, it's therapy is one of the exercises in my, in my opinion, based on no expertise on this, but it, it's one of the exercises that unravels it. Mm -hmm. And just like I said, when I was talking to that person who helped unravel a thought for me, sometimes when you're just by yourself, you can't unravel it for yourself for some reason. I don't know why, but other techniques are like journaling. You force yourself to write, you force yourself yeah. to think. So it's not like a therapy shouldn't be thought of as like a bad thing. It just helps you unravel that damn knot in your head. Exactly. And the, the therapist can help with things that you probably can't even do on your own, especially anyone that's dealt with trauma. So I've had um, a traumatic experience in my life and it was something that really weighed me down for a long time. Um, and like therapy was what helped me get to the root of it. Because even when a traumatic event happens, it goes into a space in our head that doesn't... Um, that that feels it so intensely um, in order to like protect us from it happening again. And so through therapy, they're able to shake it up and move it to like a different area of your mind that helps you see it clearly and without so much intense emotion. So yeah, therapy um, is incredible. And even if you aren't suffering from depression or anxiety, therapy is just helpful to talk about your day-to-day -day life and vent about things. And even through therapy, you can do goal setting um, if you like want to 
take care of yourself more but aren't ready to like work with a health and wellness coach, you can do that type of stuff in therapy too. So therapy is one of the biggest things you would tell someone to do? Yeah, definitely therapy. Definitely learning how to take care of your body. But that's kind of a hard one too, because whenever you don't love yourself, you don't feel um, the desire to take care of yourself. So kind of doing it for yourself, but not, um, I guess I'm trying to put this. (laughs) It's a hard thing to explain to love yourself, but from what you're telling me is it's, it's weird from what you're telling me. It's not a thing that like, you can just look inside and say, I love myself. And you did it when you did it. It came out of nowhere when you were running again. So it seems like you, you have to just like put pieces of the puzzle together and then yeah, like, exactly. just like, like yourself. Like <laughs> you run, you exercise, exercise probably like, I don't know the science behind it, but probably releases like good chemicals yeah. in your body. Yeah, so it does. That's one you eat healthy. You have mm-hmm. higher energy levels. You're healthier. You have the chemicals in your body and your energy levels are higher. That probably means that like one, you feel better, but yeah. two, you're doing more. The exactly. more, if the more you do, the more you actually like. Oh, I'm. I can do things. Like I, I don't just sit on the couch all day and accomplish nothing. So your energy's up. You feel good. You accomplish more. And maybe when all those puzzle pieces are coming in, you start to like have a self reinforcing love. Is that <laughs> potential? Yeah, it does come together. And there's more to that too. You can work out and uh, eat right and still not love yourself and still have struggles with that. So that's when you have to do some of the internal work as well, like, um, quieting that negative chatter that's going on in your mind. Is that meditating? Is Um, that meditating? Yeah, you can definitely do that through meditation and then kind of, so you're, you have to look at it as if it's disassociated from you. Like that little negative voice inside your head is not you. Your thoughts that you think every day, and this is kind of a crazy thing. It sounds a little crazy or like it doesn't make sense, but the thoughts that you think, the things running through your mind are not you. Like you have an essence and then your thoughts just kind of come and go and they come from so many different areas. They can come from a society. They can come from your parents. They can come from beliefs that you thought as a child um, and just never let go of. Um, And so quieting that and recognizing that it's not a part of you and starting to question it because that negative chatter comes from a place of fear and it comes from a place of I'm going to say these things because I'm trying to protect you, which sounds silly because it's being so mean and saying mean things to you, but it's trying to protect you from being hurt by external factors. Um, And so going back to what you started with, like what I would tell someone, yes, therapy first, but then after that, taking action, even if it's small action to live healthier or even just to do something that you genuinely enjoy, even if you don't feel like you're worth it, or even if you don't feel like you, you respect yourself enough or value yourself enough, find something that you enjoy to do or something you feel could better your mind or your body, um, and take action but don't overthink it and don't listen to that that negative chatter inside of your mind whenever you start doing it. I'm going to comment on this. Do it. T- tell me what you think here because I'm, I'm sort of – I feel like I sort of am thinking the same way as you. So here in, um, I have this like theory. I don't know if it's a theory. It's just I think it's how it works, but we'll see. We'll mm-hmm. see if what you think. The like uh, wh- when I talk a lot about like setting goals, I say that you're you have to sort of do it in a sense that like you're ordering your subconscious mind to do this, 
and you, when I say like I say, you have to almost separate yourself from your subconscious. It's almost like two different things. Mm -hmm. Like you're you, and the subconscious is like I don't know what the fuck, just something. And you can order it. You can like direct the subconscious in ways. Like you can you can or direct it to look in certain directions, focus on certain things. And if you want to, I want to be the best podcaster in the entire world. Boom. And that, and, and that's not my goal, but well, maybe it should be my goal. But if that was it and you're like, and I will get there by doing boom, 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 boom. And subconscious, this is your goal for the next year. Like this is you. Everything we think about is boom, this. And I'm like ordering like almost like a separate being a, I don't know if it's a separate being, but like you said, it's hard to explain. Like it's a separate thing. Mm -hmm. Now my, now where it's relating to what you're saying is, is it possible that that subconscious when it doesn't have, because what I'm getting at is all these negative thoughts in like, you can think about it blocking them out or trying to not let them in. Or is it like the subconscious, can you like, instead of blocking, maybe it's your subconscious going crazy. Like it's everywhere. And you're mm -hmm. saying, Nope, Nope. Hey bud. Here, 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 here. Let's chill the hell out. This is the goal. Here, here's where we're going. Like, and when it's preoccupied by something so much more important, all these other stupid thoughts don't have a chance to enter because it's preoccupied by something else. Is that a thing? Does that make sense? I see what you're saying, or I, th I think I understand what you're saying. <laughs> um, and it's well, because I, th I only thought of it because you mentioned like it's weird because you have to think about yourself as like not your thoughts yeah. and not this thing, and that made me think of what I always talk about when I say, well, it's order this, order your subconscious to focus on this. Wow. And if it's not on, because like goal setting is all about the the uh metaphor is like if you ha don't if you don't have goals you're like a boat in the water without a rudder it's like you're floating everywhere so like i'm thinking if you're a subconscious without like clear you don't have to always have goals but like clear vision and mm -hmm. targets of what you want to do in life and if it's not clear and there's no target you're just floating and the bad thoughts come in your head boom it's like easy but if you're clearly targeted you're preoccupied. You don't deal with that other bull crap you have all those other thoughts. That theory is not heavily tested, by the way. I'm yeah. just thinking. Oh about yeah. It now. No, I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. And I, I understand that. And I do feel like it is kind of the same concept of separating it from yourself. And that's been something I've been working on lately is understanding this essence. Um, and like actually in Headspace, they have something called the quiet confidence. So whenever you don't have any thoughts in your mind or or even if you do i guess a good way to look at it is your mind is the sky the blue blue sky very clear and then these thoughts come and go so you are just existing that is your essence just your existence um and then your thoughts are separate from you so i see when you're when you're saying the subconscious and i i like the way that you put that actually because just like having the negative chatter like putting a name to it even if you want to call it something um like mm -hmm. bill or <laughs> jim or something um it kind of helps you um look at it a little differently when you're telling your brain Hey brain, this is what we're focusing on and I'm going to tell you what to do and you just go do it. Um, I really love that idea. <laughs> and on the point that you were making about um, blocking the, the negative chatter, I wouldn't say like you want to block the negative chatter so much or like try to like push it away because then it's just going to keep coming back because you're not dealing mm -hmm. with it. Um, one, letting it pass naturally, just like in meditation when they tell you when you're meditating to allow your thoughts to just pass, observe them, but don't hold on to them. That's one way. And then another is questioning them of, you know, genuinely, where are you coming from? Like, how are you trying to protect me right now? Is this something deeper that I need to heal or talk to a therapist about? Um, it's kind of, I'm kind of putting them both on, <laughs> on different ends because I feel like that negative chatter is a very creative, um, very um left-brained left-brained is the more creative side right 
I think right brain right is creative. Brain. Okay. And then the other side um, is more like, we're going to set these goals and this is the structure to everything. So I think it's the same concept of separating it in order to help you be who you want to be. <laughs> Just kind of like putting that off onto other other areas of your mind. Yeah. Strange. What a, like... What the hell is the mind? Yeah. You know, how weird is the freaking mind? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's we have. No, I don't think like we can run all these studies on it and see where the neural things are firing, but it is a freaking complicated thing. Yeah. Strange. I don't even want to think. It about is it. strange. I know. <laughs> it always gives me like. Um, I kind of think about that too. Um, and maybe you see this too when you do when you talk about self de- development. Um you have this moment where you're like, okay, am I saying the right thing? Am I actually saying something that's going to help someone? Like, I know there's all this research, but what if there's this one little glint that, that this isn't right? You have that kind of um, imposter syndrome almost. But then when you think about it on the grand scheme of things, like what is truly right? Like we can research everything, but we know very little about, about the world that we live in. It's insane. Well, what is like, cause what is the world? Yeah. You want to get into this exactly. topic? Like <laughs> is the earth conception. just a speck? Oh, I feel like is I'm the earth some, just a little speck? Something right now. <laughs> Are, do you believe in the theory there's multi universes? I have been actually, so I've been reading up on microdosing and this isn't telling anyone mm. to try that or I'm not, um, is this like with the elves? You see the elves and stuff, or is that something else? Um, that might. Were you listening to Joe Rogan? I think Joe Rogan talks about that. Um, I heard it. I probably on Joe Rogan. Yeah, about the elves. Um, yeah. So microdosing is like using mushrooms to have this different multi-dimensional experience, <laughs> um, which I am not recommending it because it is illegal. <laughs> um, but <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, I. I have been listening to more. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Terrence McKinnon or no. um, I know Joe Rogan talks about it a lot. Um, not who wrote, um, he writes a lot about plants, the omnivores dilemma. Oh, I can't remember his name for some reason. I heard of, I think the omnivore develop, but I yeah. haven't made, I, I, I don't know what it is. I might've heard it in a conversation. Or Let something. me just see his name really quick. Omnivores dilemma. Do you believe in the? Do you believe? First of all, but do you believe in the microdosing accessing a different uh, world, like a different what? Like, because you're supposed to be able to like. I don't really understand it, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so- but you're entering a different type of being i guess do you believe in that i don't know if i believe i'm a little skeptical uh, i'm like 95 percent skeptical um the name of the guy is michael pollan um which okay. he also has i think a joe rogan um po- like interview and then he also is on a couple other podcasts um he writes a lot of great books but he talks about using plants as medicine or using mushrooms uh, specifically as medicine, um, which that is slowly becoming a, a real thing, which is pretty cool. Um, as far as the dimensions, like Terrence McKinnon talks about that a lot. Um, and I don't know, I, I guess I'd have to experience it to, to really truly understand it. But the way that it was described is that um, like our mind can only like see, like because of our I think it's our prefrontal cortex, like this, the part of our mind that's like thinking and like analyzing and trying to figure things out. It's kind of limiting us from seeing all that there is. Um, And whenever you're on mushrooms, it shows that it kind of lowers that. And that's also your ego. Um, And so I don't know, maybe there is something that we can't see that the the brain is blocking. But I just, yeah, I just, I've never experienced it, so I don't. I know. mean, our perceptions are flawed. Like, yeah, they are. They're, they're just they're they are perceptions mm-hmm. of the world, but that's that's exactly what they are perceptions. Yeah. Like, our memories are flawed. Our mind makes up things to make up, like make make or make make things. Our minds make up things to make things make sense. 
<laughs> yeah. Mister. Just like think about our perception of what things are like mm-hmm. uh, me. Yeah. I, like I'm, I'm one thing, right? I'm one thing, but I'm really, if you like were to just like m- had a microscope view of me, it's really just billions and billions and billions and billions of cells. Yeah. So I'm not, am I me or not? Or am I just billions of cells? Like, that's the, sh- that's the stuff that you start thinking about that freaks you out a little bit. Yeah. You're going to, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> we both are going to have trouble sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. We could talk about this for a long time, oh, but we're around it. We're coming up on the hour. So, sure. um, we could have, we could have got a lot longer. Me and my <laughs> wife, like, uh, I remember in like, we went to Key West one night, mm. one, uh, week for vacation. And we had like this whole debate. We're looking at the stars. We're like, how many stars do you think are there? Is infinity or not? And, like, we're, I, so I can go on this all day, oh, yeah. but, <laughs> but no one's going to listen to it. That's fine. Maybe just me and you because we're only interested in it. Um, <laughs> all right. So where can people find you? Oh, good question. Um, so I have a website. It's sonsandself.podia.com. So um, that's like an online course platform, which I don't have an online course yet, but they're in the works. Um, so that's where you can find me. You can also find me on Instagram and the handle is at sons and self. And then I'm also on Facebook and it's just my first and last name, Jelsey Martinez. And then I'm on YouTube and I have a podcast. Um, so the podcast is sons and self. And then on YouTube, it's just my name, Jelsey Martinez. We didn't talk about the damn podcast. You got to come back on and we'll do another one. Yes, there we go. Or you come on to mine and we'll continue our conversation. Yes, <laughs> I would love it. All right. I appreciate you coming on here. Um, have a good rest of your day. I will put the links in the description so people can find what you just said. And good talking to you. Uh, uh, you're from Texas, right? Yeah, originally from Texas, but I live in Denver now. Denver. Denver. Got it. Awesome. Well, I hope you get no more. Well, maybe you like the snow. I don't know if you like the snow. It's good for the environment. It's good for the environment. So more, more snow. Yeah. (laughs) More snow just... But leave Chelsea a little walkway to run. Yes, there you All go. Right? Hello. Snow yes. everywhere but on her shirt. But yes, that's perfect. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. All right. If I had the powers, I would. I would do it. All right. Appreciate you coming on. Have a good night. And we will stay connected. Yeah. Thank Talk you again, later. Chris. All right. Take it easy. Thanks. Bye. Bye.